uh, innovations in uh, location-based augmented reality with Andrew from Kenny Lab. And after that, we will have some mobile edge of computing. So, uh, if anyone, Andrew, can uh, Andrew, can you come uh, to the stage? You mic'd up? Perfect. Uh, then, thank you for your talk and uh, have a good time. Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Couch. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Candy Lab. We're an augmented reality technology company based in Southern California. Thank you so much for coming to this presentation. We're gonna talk about innovations in location technologies and augmented reality from our perspective, working with this tech since 2012. You guys might know a recent app uh, recently that launched with a pretty popular title and took the world by storm. The same core technology behind that app, uh, it's an engine, an AR engine. Uh, we also have that same technology. So we'll be talking about for the pre-Pokemon Go uh, experience, uh, and then shortly uh, thereafter what happened with us and the rest of the industry from what we're noticing. So what is location-based augmented reality? I think most of you have a pretty good idea, but uh, just to give you a little bit more insights, it's knowing where your phone is, knowing where content is in the real world, uh, be it you know, outdoors using GPS uh, or indoors using beacons. And the camera turns on the phone and you can visually see content uh, over the camera screen. Uh, like it's, this month is Halloween in the US and you see that there's a pumpkin here. Well, that pumpkin, it's talking to a location, like a latitude and a longitude location. So think of like a scavenger hunt. We are going around a city collecting things that this technology will like to do it. Now, what's so innovative about that? From a marketing perspective, you guys familiar when Pokemon Go first launched, there was a pizza shop out in New Jersey. He spent $10 uh, on, on a Poke stop. Within 30 days, he reported 75% foot traffic increase coming into his store just because people were collecting a game character outside of their storefront. This technology will let anyone that controls that uh, have that same type of, of power. And we find that very meaningful uh, for marketing uses. Here's an example video of how location-based augmented reality works. an example of how location-based augmented reality can drive consumers right in front of a coffee shop, right? Because they're playing some sort of game that brings them to a location. And that's something we haven't seen. Uh, I, I think we can all be very open and honest about this as digital marketers, just to see like the phenomenon of a Pokemon Go come out and, and what that means when people can go collect these characters around a city for them playing a game, and then what it means for the businesses that get the benefit from those increased retail sales as people are going about the city, playing a scavenger hunt, learning about the, the different attractions. Uh, and it's really innovative, we find, that you know, we've just never seen this type of conversions before. Uh, you know, we have a few examples of our own that we've launched in the US, but again, you know, nothing really comes close to what we've all learned with this recent title coming out. We just put uh, this together over at our booth before we came here to give another example of how location-based AR works. You guys might recognize this person. <laughs> so even adding like Queen Elizabeth, uh, Queen Elizabeth, adding something like that through a dashboard and having it immediately show up on the user's device instantly means it's almost like giving you a laser pointer and sending people anywhere you want to go on a map and they go and visually collect these things. So here's a couple of breakthrough ways mobile augmented reality is being used by brands today. 
So in tourism, there's a use case out in Hawaii where people come and land at the airport, and as soon as they get there, they get an, air, they get an app that takes them all around the island where they're able to collect like pineapples, right, that are by the beaches, they're by businesses, they're by places that the tourism department wants people to go and visit. Uh, other examples of how location-based augmented reality is being used right now, which is retail. You guys just saw a video on that. So you can see how playing a game can actually drive retail purchases. That video that you saw where that woman was collecting the beacon on top, clearly she's not touching a beacon. She's seeing something visually appear through her mobile phone because that beacon was there that drove her into the store to make that purchase of the dress that you had just seen. And of course events. Radio stations uh, have been using this technology in the US since 2012. And it's a great way for people, again, have a scavenger hunt and visually see information that uh, a marketer wants them to see. The way beacons work, for those that are unfamiliar with beacons, they simply broadcast a signal. And this is something innovative and new for location-based marketing that retailers are using all over the world currently right now, where the phone gets close to these things. And say you're at Starbucks or you're at uh, you know, some store here in London, when you get close to that beacon, something automatically happens on the phone. This is something that we've seen uh, kind of janky, I think like 2009 to 2011, and then around 12, 2012, 2013, it seems like there's so much innovation in people making new user interfaces with beacons, making it more meaningful and fun for consumers, which is great for the industry at large because they can leverage these things to get people to go where they want and get information pretty effortlessly on their mobile phone. Another innovation in location-based augmented reality is not even GPS uh, specifically or Beacon. There's a technology called image recognition uh, technology where the camera phone, it's almost like it's scanning a QR code, but it's looking at a piece of artwork. A recent campaign with the Hulk, uh, parents went into the Walmart stores and at the end cap, at the end of the actual retail shelves, they were prompted to pull their phone over the Hulk and something would magically come to life on their phone, which would give them offers for their retail items in the store, they could collect points. It was a great way for the families to interact with each other uh, right around retail purchases, or right around retail products, which did lead to more purchases. That's called optical character recognition technology. Here's another example. I think Lego did a very good job with this one. They actually installed a, a TV screen with a camera just above the retail shelf. And what the kids would end up doing is they'd give the Lego box to their parents and then they would see it come to life right on the box to see what would happen once they put it together. Same technology, image recognition. But you can see how a brand could use something like this technology to show what the Lego set is gonna look like before you purchase it. The kids are engaged, the parents are taking pictures. It's a pretty clever activation. I think that's a great use of image recognition technology. You can add that into an app and you can have those same experiences and you can replicate it with pretty much any product you can think of uh, that the camera can recognize. So, you know, aligning location-based augmented reality with the needs of, cu of customers is something we've been doing since 2012. Uh, I'm gonna show you a video here in a second from the city of Corpus Christi. And they had asked us, you know, what innovative fun ways can we get people to go out and pick up trash, you know, bluntly put. Uh, so you'll see this video here that showed how that app actually worked. And you can see how you know, customers are actually using this technology to, to get the results they want at the city level. This campaign was in 2012.
So you get an idea of how in even the city of Corpus Christi, for picking up trash, somehow gamified it by using location-based augmented reality. Uh, and people got up off their couches, just like you know you would see with like a Pokemon Go. But what we noticed with that particular situation was groups of friends would actually get together. They would go around town. Uh, the trash, the icon, the city would drop them at all of their public parks and beaches where people were littering, and they were encouraging them to take a selfie and share to social media after they threw a piece of trash away. And for that, they would win prizes to movie theaters and uh, whatever the other sponsors in town were able to give up for that uh, campaign. Going back to St. Louis. The city's 250th birthday is an innovation of location-based AR. Uh, 2012, coming into 2013, the city of St. Louis, Missouri turned 250 years old. They installed 250 four-foot-tall fiberglass cakes, and they said, hey, we'd like to know if there's an app that can actually guide people to all of these locations and, and have a bit of a cool a scavenger hunt experience. So there's another use case of how location-based augmented reality can actually drive people to locations, get them to interact with the area. In that particular case, they would tap on the cake, they would learn about the artist that made it, uh, then we'd connect them to a nearby business to make a retail purchase. Uh, that campaign brought in over 90,000 users uh, over about a half year uh, while it was warm enough for them to go out and use that campaign. Uh, all the way down to sports teams, where you can connect a fan to the sponsors in between uh, football games. Imagine using location-based augmented reality in between football games where all of the sponsors on property, the fan can see them, but when the game ends, you can drop these location icons, little soccer balls, at all of the sponsor locations, uh, brick and mortars, right? Say like throughout all of London. And people could go collect them at all of those businesses that spend money with the actual football team in between games as a way to encourage the fans <clears throat> to visit the sponsors. And as long as you offer some sort of prizes uh, and incentives, the data that you collect on that, that you could use for further marketing, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. And we find that very helpful uh, when you use these campaigns. At our company, we have an engine, we have a management system, and white label apps. So after we've done these campaigns in the US, we've learned that there's a lot of similarities with what works and is fun for users, and what's easy and manageable for you as the person that owns the app. We've tied in a HoloLens, kind of accidentally we found out when we were placing beacons uh, across our uh, warehouse for testing, we forgot where we put all of them. Anybody here work with beacons, by any chance, have ever worked with them before in the very back? So we naively got into beacons a couple of years ago and we wanted this to simply work indoors. After we placed them, we forgot where we put them. So we started doing these pirate maps, putting X's, and then we, we realized with HoloLens, we can write a beacon scripting, a beacon smithing code, where we now put the HoloLens on, and because beacons broadcast a signal, we can drop a hologram on top of that signal. So you can see where they're all placed in the building, see the battery power, change content to them, uh, offer types, and we find that very helpful and innovative. Uh, it's a problem that we kind of created ourselves, but the HoloLens allowed us to kind of dig our way out of that to scale beacons, you know, to a certain degree. We find that pretty helpful. Guys, I'm really appreciative that you let us come in here and talk about our experiences with location-based augmented reality. At this time, uh, if there's any questions, I'd love to, to answer them for you. Otherwise, we have a booth just over here at D12. We'll be there for the rest of the day. We'd we'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Uh, and that concludes my presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andrew. Are there any questions from the audience? So, uh, what? I post one question. Uh, so, how do you see, like, uh, you know, after all this Pokemon hype, uh, do you see that brands are really thinking now to use the technology, or uh, what do you think? In our personal experiences, it's not the brands, but it's the agencies uh, here in the UK, in London, and in China that seem to be really active, uh, at least reaching out to us, uh, asking to just get access to the core engine. We're getting more middle market customers uh, here in the UK, London, and the US to use our white label apps, which really have like a four square gaming model to them. It's really not like a full on game, but we're finding that to be really helpful for like radio stations, gardens, botanical, uh, gardens, museums, and like radio stations that run these one to two day events. We're getting more requests for people to use uh, the apps for the middle market side, and we've really only noticed this type of traction for about four months now. We've been around for five years, we really had to bill ourselves as a location-based white label app company, post Pokemon Go. Yeah, we are getting reached out to. One or two brands have reached out, but it's mostly the PR firms, the agencies that represent them, that are looking for the newest, coolest thing to roll out for their clients you know, for the following year, which is where we really shine because we're a tech company, you know, not a yeah. PR firm. So it's great that they're reaching out now. Okay, cool. 
Thank you. Guys, thank you so much. So we have now John.